We all know that compasses point to what is called the magnetic north and that wherever we are on the earth, the needle will faithfully point towards the north. What is interesting about this is that very old maps of the earth show a magnetic mountain in what we call the North Pole and this has been referred to as Mount Meru and Rupees Nigra by mapmaker Gerardus Mercator. In the book of Enoch chapter 18 we read, I saw the paths of the angels. I saw at the end of the earth the firmament of the heaven above. And I proceeded and saw a place which burns day and night, where there are seven mountains of magnificent stones, three towards the east and three towards the south. And as for those towards the east, one was of colored stone, and one of pearl, and one of jacinth, and those towards the south of red stone. But the middle one reached to heaven like the throne of God, of alabaster, and the summit of the throne was of sapphire. And I saw flaming fire. And beyond these mountains is a region the end of the great earth, though the heavens were completed. Then in chapter 25 verse 1 we read, From thence I proceeded to the middle of the earth, and beheld a happy and fertile spot, which contained branches continually sprouting from the trees which were planted in it. There I saw a holy mountain, and underneath it water on the eastern side, which flowed towards the south. I saw also on the east another mountain as high as that, and between them there were deep, but not wide valleys. Mercator was fascinated by the science of magnetism and in 1541 had added a magnetic owl to his maps. At an earlier date Johannes Royce's world map published in Rome in 1517 has four islands around the pole and its legend mentions, among its sources, the book of the Inventio Fortunate. These islands appeared again in Frisius' 1534 world map. The marine map by Olus Magnus 1539 presented both the four islands and the magnetic mountain. In 1577, Mercator wrote a letter to John Dee referring to an expedition going beyond Greenland in about 1360 which was made by an Englishman from Oxford, probably from a monastic background. He described four canals which flow with such current to the inner whirlpool, that if vessels once enter they cannot be driven back by wind. The friar specified that a chain of mountains formed a wall of northern islands, with the exception of some apertures into which 19 channels flowed. The largest one was 12 French miles, the narrowest three-fourths of a mile, and here no ship could have passed due to the strong current. Besides the 19 channels, other five were joined together and flowed into the closed sea. In the middle there was the enclosed sea, 12 French miles wide. On the other side there extended a splendid plain, among the most salubrious of the north. In the center of the enclosed sea there was a vortex into which flowed the four internal seas of the pole. The water moves, he writes, in a circle and goes down into the depths of the earth, as though it were being poured into a funnel, and the aperture is almost 8 degrees. In the middle of the sea there is a mountain 33 French miles wide, completely made of magnet and as high as the clouds. A recent assemblage of pieces of a map made in 1587 by Urbano Monti has been published by the David Rumsey Map Collection at Stanford University. The extraordinary 60-sheet manuscript world map is known as a planisphere and is the largest known early map of the world. It was hand-drawn by Monti in Milan, Italy, and only one other manuscript copy exists. The digitally joined 60-sheet map image below is the first time the map Monti made has been seen as one unified map as Monti intended in the 430 years since it was created. The assembled map, just over 10 feet in diameter, is one of the largest, if not the largest, world maps made in the 16th century. The degree of detail and decoration is stunning and the entire production is surely unique in the history of cartographic representation. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this video about how to have limited the access to the middle of uh, the flat earth. They said they had to do this because the telescope got invented and they could not have people to get close enough to to the center point so they could see the magnetic mountain Meru in the middle, or what we will call it. Maybe that name is not the real one, but nevertheless, let's use the name Meru for now. We can clearly see that up to like 1610, uh, all world maps and old ancient world maps uh, clearly describe the middle with four islands around uh, the center point where the magnetic mountain is. And, and after the invention of this telescope, the <laughs> Greenland's getting bigger and bigger and, and, and land masses disappear. Uh, uh, it's very strange and odd to, to view. Uh, 
if you look at the history with the world maps, you can, uh, of course, and uh, as I always uh, say, study what I put out and, and investigate it yourself. Uh, I've just stumbled across this and, and noted a pattern in the, the world maps. and So it's like very clearly after the invention of the telescope, and that makes perfect sense because they can't have people to get close enough to, to the center point. So, so uh, then they actually can see what's going on. And also today, you, airlines are not allowed to fly over the center point. So I, I will think nobody can actually get close enough to, to view the, the mountain. Uh, they have uh, think that out very carefully, how close they will let anybody get to that areas. Also like with, with an Antarctica, of course. Uh, so uh, it's the same. It's censorship and control of the masses. The world is what we are telling you it is. Just like in 1984 where Vincent telling Brian the world.